programs for vaccination status? We are 100% vaccinated. Hey, uh, hey, Coach. Hey, what type of gaps are you looking at for Jaden Green? And you know, of course, Kevin Porter Jr. this season coming up. What type of what? The gadgets, offensive gadgets, my fault. Offensive gadgets uh, for Jalen and Scoot. I wouldn't say there's going to be too many gadgets as far as um, kind of special things that we're going to do for them. I think the style of play that I believe in and Rafael believes in is playing fast, playing with a bunch of space, letting those guys play to their strengths, getting the ball moving from side to side. If Scoot's bringing it up one side, get it to Jalen on the other side and vice versa. Um, I think they can really play well and play to their strengths. So I don't think we have to do anything um, kind of tricky at all for those guys to play to their strengths. They're both good ball handlers, athletic, um, gifted players. So uh, letting them do their thing and uh, you know, giving them some uh, structure, but let them play. Stephen, we're from both of you. Uh, how much, how important was the fact that players from the Marauders worked out together? How much can that help? How much did it help to get the <laughs> It was, their trip to the Bahamas was great for them. Uh, for them to come together as a group, you think about the young guys that we have, some of which are from overseas, coming to a situation where we have established guys and older guys. So uh, for them to want to do that at that point, you know, usually that's a part where you're kind of thinking about your own game and thinking about um, your own skill development. But they were thinking more about like, how are we gonna come together as a group? So, um, am I too close? Um, so that was great. It was, it was really, really good for them to want to go down there and, and uh, do that. Um, I think one of the themes for this year is going to be that this group should really enjoy each other and have fun. And uh, I fully intend to have fun. I think Coach does too. So I think it was from that perspective, it was a, it was a great kickoff. Stephen, how would you describe that look like last year? How would you describe last year? And more, much more importantly, does this feel in many ways like? a new start and, and like how this organization, how this team, how, how you want to start things considering all the young talent you have? Yeah, last year was challenging. It, it was. It started off one way and then we had a bunch of changes and COVID and injuries and, and everything. I learned a lot last year, so there's not a feeling that last year is lost at all because I learned a lot about a bunch of our guys uh, as far as them sticking with it and playing hard at the end and, and who we can depend on. And then the older guys, as far as, even though they were injured, staying with the group and, and um, being happy to be Rockets. Uh, and then we add our new guys who are kind of fitting right into what we finished with last year. So I'm super excited about the future of this group um, this season. and. Uh, it's going to be, there's going to be challenges just like there were last year, but there won't be built in challenges that we had with COVID and testing and, and all of those other things that were even beyond all of the obvious challenges made it even maybe harder. Well, as far as the guard rotation goes, do you have a sense yet of, of kind of how you're going to feel out around the same game that you guys submit to Eric and whether you'll have to play green and, and yeah, I mean, they're going to play together for sure. But as far as what it's going to look like, I'm not 100% sure. We have five days in Galveston where we're going to be putting guys in different positions. And it's going to be up to Rafael and I to kind of get a feel for who plays well together, who uh, might not be able to play as well together. And, and um, I'm not going to make any decisions about starting lineup or playing groups or anything like that until uh, I really get a feel for watching these guys because, you know, pickup is very different than structured practice and that's what we'll have for the next uh, five days. Jamal, I felt you talk about how you constructed the team. I know when we talked after the draft, you said you expected the thing to be exciting. So now that you're going through 
somewhere in the What do you, what's the personality of being a student? Um, yeah, I, I think it's um, young, energetic, and, and excited. I mean, I'm optimistic we're going to have fun because the, the group as a whole is already having fun. They're, they're like, they're, I mean, you guys are going to interact with them quite a bit, but these guys are going to enjoy media day. It's not, this isn't drudgery. And so, um, so I, I think, I think that's the, the thing that stands out to me about this group is that, is that kind of to a, to a player, they're all looking at this, this year as an opportunity, um, as a fun opportunity to, you know, to, for the rookies to live out their dreams, for the vets to really take a step forward. Um, and our vets are, for the most part, really young. Um, um, but even for a guy like Eric Gordon to like, just to, re you know, I don't want to say to remind everybody because no one's forgotten, but you know, Eric's like truly elite. Eric, Eric's a guy who can do everything. And so I think he's looking forward to it as a year that where he can be healthy and really, you know, and, and, and really put a stamp on a group. And from my perspective, personally, I'm, uh, you know, <laughs> you know, Eric is, Eric's at a point in his career that every single player, other player on our team is trying to get to. And so, um, so yeah, so anyway, so that, that to me, that's, that's kind of this group is, is they all have these, uh, th these challenges in front of them, but I think they're all looking forward to them um, and, and expecting to achieve them and have fun doing so. Do you have a balance in pursuit of a win each night with doing whatever, whether it's the rotation of the place or what you run for developmental sake? Yeah, that's a good question. The, the balance is going to be delicate for sure, but I, I really think that if we do things in a winning way every day and um, are really thoughtful about how we're going to go forward with this group as far as their individual development, as far as their development as a group. Uh, it makes it a little bit easier, but um, my job is to do what I can with this group so they can progress and get better. And um, day one probably will, will hopefully won't look anything like day 30, which won't look like day 90. Uh, so as long as we're progressing and, and improving, then I'm good. As far as like the wins and losses, we're going to learn from both. So um, that's kind of the plan right now as far as the uh, expectations are concerned. So do you have times where this, these guys, these veterans, are more likely to win a close game in the last five minutes, but these young guys need the experience playing a close game in the last five minutes, so go developmental, go young guys. Yeah, I mean, I don't think there's a separation to me. It's a team. So, uh, like he was talking about Eric Gordon, there's going to be games where Eric Gordon's at the, in at the end of the game, and that's just what it is. And everybody will learn either by playing or by watching what Eric does down the stretch of the game. So, um, it's like, like you're kind of alluding to, it's not an easy thing because it is a developmental um, type situation, but we're going to be doing everything we can to do things in a winning way. So whatever that means, that's what we're going to do. Coach, what was, the, uh, what was some of the conversations you had with players during the off season about having that chip on the show and trying to prove to everybody that last year wasn't who they really were? Yeah, I, I guess those conversations, I mean, there's only a few guys. There's, there's Tate and there's KJ and there's Armani. Um, who really kind of went through the KJ and Armani didn't. <laughs> like, they, we're not, but like, yeah, nobody's coming back. Yeah. So, I, you know, I don't, I, I, I don't, I'm sorry to jump in, but I, yeah, I think the premise of the questions will just, it's, it's not, I don't, I don't think, I don't think last year is something that is bothering this group at all. And I don't think it should, because, because, you know, like literally this group never, even the returning guys, they never played a single game together last year, which is really unique. So I don't think I, I don't think it's weighing us down. Whatever. So to that point, when you have a group of guys that's this young, you can almost I, I don't want to say mold them, but you can almost like make this team what you want. They're very young. They're very impressionable. How are you guys molding them, and, and what are you trying to teach them? Again, just such a young group. Yeah. I, well, we haven't really started yet. <laughs> so what so, do you plan on teaching? So. 
first tomorrow it's going to be a hard practice and it's going to be teaching them how to be professional and what it takes to be a winning team and um the grind that it's going to take for us to to grow and, and be good uh, but we're also concentrating on a lot of off the court stuff as far as making sure that they are taken care of and they don't feel like they're lonely and they don't feel that um, they want, we want them to feel like it's great to be a rocket. So being, feeling like it's great to be a rocket means a lot more than what we're going to be doing in practice for the next five days. It's team dinners. It's making sure that if a guy has an issue, there's somebody for him to talk to and all of those things. So, um, it's very, it's different because we do have such young guys, but we also have older guys like Rafael was saying with Eric Gordon, and we also have DJ Augustine who has been through a lot, and, and uh, those guys can impart their wisdom on our young group as well. Rafael, can you talk about maybe how this is built a little bit through the start of last year? Maybe you know, just kind of, you just seem like there's a different kind of outlook on what I'm saying. Yeah, it's about as different from last year as it could possibly be. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> I, I, I think yeah. I think full stop. Uh, but but it's exciting, you know. And so I, I do think I, I think you know every every year is is by is you know every year is a different year. Every team is a different team. Um, that that just is. Um, you know, there's oftentimes commonalities, and and in this instance, there probably aren't very many or any. But. Um, but you know we're all lucky to be here, and and we're and you know and it's 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 a challenging job, but it's a really fun one. And so I think I think this group is going to really embrace it. From what you see, a little more relaxed, a little more at ease. Um, where's that from? Um, I'm generally a relaxed at ease dude, <laughs> <laughs> so I'm not sure what I seen like last year, but. Um, I, you know, I don't know. Maybe to the extent it is, maybe you know, it's just a little bit more comfortable, I guess. But um, you know, um, I, I do my best in life to keep things in perspective. So I, I generally am not somebody who, who I, I don't get stressed actually. Like, you didn't smile as much. But, um, you guys talk about growth and development, having fun. Where does winning come from? Yeah, that's a good question. So my belief is that if if we're growing and we're developing and we're having fun and we're playing really hard, we'll win basketball games. I mean, to me, that's that's how it, that's how it factors in. And I guess getting back to your earlier point, one, one of the nice things I think about this year, about this group, is, you know, we're very clearly a group that is, that is, that is built, trying to build something. And so when you're doing that, it's not all about the very end result. It's, it's a, at least a little bit about the process. And so, I think for, for us, a lot of the challenge is making sure that we stay focused on the process and that, you know, because that actually, I mean, especially in the NBA regular season, no one comes out undefeated, right? And so even if you have a super veteran team that is trying to win a championship, the best way to, to, to make that team successful is to focus on the process. Because during the regular season, you just always wins and losses, wins and losses. You might actually lose sight of the goal, which is to win at the very end. It's easier in some respects to stay focused on the process when when you have a group like this. I always think it's the right thing to do, but but I think in this case it's it's self evident and something we've talked a lot about and we're really committed to. Steve, how has it been for you when the coaching staff or offseason kind of seeing stuff that looked last season putting us together towards Um It's been I mean <laughs> Like Rafael said, last year was so different. <laughs> so, so we did evaluate quite a bit as far as what we were doing offensively and defensively. And we made some changes and tweaks and, and that sort of thing. But um, to have a group that, number one, I think our roster really does fit the way that I want to play basketball offensively and defensively. So um, it, it, it does lend itself to a little bit more continuity than we had last year and um, a little bit easier as far as what we can do with the group uh, on both ends of the floor. But, you know, 
we're going to play fast, we're going to get to the rim, we're going to shoot threes offensively, we're going to get the ball moving, and then on defense, we're going to use the athleticism that we have, and we're going to use the Eric Gordons and Daniel Tices of the world, who are then uh, Daniel House, who um, are good defenders, and we're going to grow the other guys into being good defenders. So um, that's kind of the vision right now, and, and uh, I'm excited about it. Well, you mentioned ultimately the goal is to win. How difficult will it be then for Stephen to jump on this too, to have John Wall sitting there watching instead of winning and playing? And what went into that decision to have him watch games? Yeah, I mean, I think, um, you know, uh, John, John and I will talk. To, why don't we just save it for John? John? John and I are going to talk to you guys a little bit. Like, yeah. Like, well, why don't we just save it, save it there? But um, yeah, and, but I'm, remember the question, and I'm happy to answer it in 25 minutes. How's that? Well, Val, when uh, Stephen was hired, it was for a completely different situation, and did not go back to last year, but this year, so much of what he was hired for, which was you know, relationships with players, being able to develop players, that is key for everything you're trying to do right now. Watching him last year as a coach, how does he, in some ways, perfectly fit everything that you guys are trying to do now with this entirely new group? Yeah, I would say going back, we took a long time to hire coaches, you remember. And so one of the, so one of the things that, that did really stand out about Stephen, um, should you know what answers? <laughs> I, I know what that is a great question. <laughs> great question. <laughs> one of the things that really stood out about Stephen was um, was that he, you know, he could coach teams at every iteration because he's um, he's a really, really smart guy and he's a really, really nice man. And that, that fundamental combination, um, I think, lends itself to somebody who's going to be able to relate to veteran groups and younger groups and everything else. Um, and he's going to just, by virtue of just sheer intellect, easily understand the difference and, and easily understand the goals. And, you know, that, that became evident through the very long um, uh, interview process that that was something that was really a strength of his. And, and we just, you know, to the extent that well, I've learned anything, um, since the day we hired him, it's that, that we were right, that that, that that is for sure a strength of his. And so, um, so yeah, so I, I guess I would say I'm not surprised that as we went through these changes, he ended up being the right person for us. Um, and I think he's a very good fit with his group. And I think I think it's challenging, but I, I also think, you know, the, the, the nature of professional sports is that it's competitive and it's challenging and, and it's on all of us, um, but it should be fun. And I think, I think we have in place, um, uh, in Stephen, the right person to really get through this group and to, you know, a, and to start building something that can hopefully in time be really special. Stephen, along those lines, can, can you put a feeling on maybe how much you've grown since last year, how much you've evolved, how much you've changed maybe as a coach after one year as, as the guy who the show? Yeah, I think I've maybe even told you this before. It's a completely different job than being an assistant coach. So going through one year, you're more comfortable, more confident, you know kind of what works and what doesn't. Um, you found, I found my head coaching voice, which was something that I had to work on initially. So there's a lot that you learn in that first year. And through the adversities that we had last year, uh, I grew and, and made some mistakes. And some, one, one thing that I try not to do is make the same mistake twice. So. Uh, it'll be better for me just because I have that year under my belt and I'm not coming in as a first time head coach anymore. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm experienced. <laughs> Wouldn't you maybe have that light bulb moment with you since you found your voice? And if, can you define what that voice is? Um, I mean, there was so much change last year. I don't think I really found my head coach voice until towards the end of the season when we had all those young guys and they were just out there playing hard and and we were just trying to figure out who was in the lineup and and, uh, and play as hard as we possibly can and, and kind of simplify things but uh, moving forward I think building on that is important it's important for me it's important for the group it's important for the organization to know that Every player that we had last year got better. Every player that, um, as we went through the season, our team got better. And this summer, every player who was in Houston got better, and our group will get better as a result. So um, the improvement, my personal improvement, 
is very much attached to the improvement of the group. What if you were to tell how you do now? You evolve as a general manager. Um, yeah, I don't, yeah, I mean, Steve and I are like, we're very similar, but we're also very different. But my answer would be like, yeah, I'm the same dude. Like, I, I don't, I don't really think much has changed. I know people maybe a little bit better, especially the media. The funny thing is I knew most of the people in the front office pretty well, but I, maybe I know you guys better. So maybe my interaction with you guys is a little bit better, but, um, or a little bit different or whatever. Um, but I think fundamentally, um, I don't, I don't think I've changed much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.